Hello everyone, and welcome to Fire Dance Mods. Uh, this is Otaku Showboat, and today we will be discussing molybdenum processing again. If you've been enjoying these tutorials thus far, please be sure to do all of the engagement and social stuff below the video. This series is of course supported by my patrons at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. You can of course also support Pyanodon's mods development at patreon.com slash pyanodon. So, molybdenum is a very linear processing chain that you will, generally speaking, need to do at Green Science uh, to get into the uh, Circuit 2 stuff. Yeah. You, you will be doing molly processing uh, to get into Circuit 2's. Uh, why? Why do you need to do molly to get into Circuit 2's? Well... If we have a look at the stuff that Molly makes, uh, we can see at some point, among all of this stuff, it is used for Aramid. It is used for Aramid. So it you need Aramid. Uh, this is the particular recipe that you will have access to. There is an upgraded recipe that you get access to later in the game. You need the Aramid fiber uh, going into some of the circuit two stuff if i get rid of that and i instead do my search for aramid here in hell mod we can see that aramid is used uh, in the casting of stainless steel uh, as well as super steel you do need stainless steel to build a very specific building as part of the circuit two processing chain uh, and of course aramid uh, fiber also used to make silicon wafers which you need for several uh, dope silicons uh, going into the circuit 2 processing chain. Uh, you also need it for cladded cores to get into optical fiber, which means you also need it for neuroprocessors. Uh, and of course, actual chemical science packs themselves. So lots and lots of rather important things uh, will need the aramid, which means you need the plates for that aramid. And I will also tell you you will need molybdenum disulfide going into intelligent units, uh, as well as molybdenum trioxide to make some very, very, very important uh, stuff. It's the uh, blah. It is the blah. Yes, that is that is accurate. It is the super alloy, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, so super. Steel uses molly plates, uh, and the alloy. The alloy uses molybdenum trioxide. Now, if we look at uh, molybdenum disulfide, if that's even the name of it, uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. or it might just be moss two. There it is. It's MOS2 by ingredient, we can see that here it is used for condo cores, which is part of the intelligent unit uh, processing setup, the production setup for intelligent units. So that is the only thing it's actually used for outside of this chain. Uh, so you'll want some sort of uh, warehouse, I guess, of it. It needs to be provided at some point. So just to do this. So do bear that in mind. Uh, and of course, you also need molybdenum ore uh, to make a few things, such as cermet, uh, crude cermet. Uh, because crude cermet uh, product. Really? Uh, so crude cermet is molybdenum ore and ceramic and if we look at ingredient for molybdenum it's actually molybdenite or excuse me or or please please spell that again not not the actual name anyway regardless oh uh, regardless we'll we'll stop here wasting too much time on that Regardless, you need the ore for some stuff. You need the 
disulfide for this for some stuff, you need the trioxide for some stuff. So, what is this processing chain? How do you mine the actual ore? How do you get get the ore in the first place? You get the ore through molybdenum mines, which up previously on my tutorials, uh, the molybdenum mines used to require uh, laser turrets. Uh, they no longer require laser turrets. In fact, any instance of laser turrets being required in any mine uh, had since been removed since the last time we met for the main tutorial series. Uh, so you can actually, you don't need military science whatsoever uh, in the current state of the pie suite. That will change at some point when Pinodon actually adds in some military stuff. Uh, but until that point, uh, it is not required. Uh, and it's not really changed at all in the pie suite. It's like v vanilla military science. You get molybdenum by mining with drill heads. You don't actually need any outside input to mine molybdenum outside of providing drill heads for the mining drills uh, to get them. Now, you could also ground bore molybdenum ore, uh, but that is going to require drilling fluid 3 uh, to mine it, which is pretty expensive. Uh, pretty expensive to get that drilling fluid 3. Uh, otherwise, you don't have a way of getting molybdenum ore all that easily. Uh, there are some other biotics. I think you can get it from, yeah, atomizing. You can atomize chrydron seeds, which might actually be the better way. Uh, spikes from Dingrit, as well as Tufra 1 to 1 in the ore. Late game, that's probably better. But, uh, yeah, like, late game, that's probably the way to go. One to one, depending on how much actual ore you need. Oh yes, it's gasoline as well to, and three drill heads to do the uh, ground boring of molybdenum. But if you are playing pie block, do note that you get molybdenum as a byproduct of the copper ore processing chain. So yeah, that's another intricacy to consider. Otherwise, you're only main methods of getting into molybdenum would be through either ground boring or atomizing those particular stuffs when you get access to those atomizer recipes. So, once you get your molybdenum, it's pretty easy to get 15. In fact, it's pretty easy to get as much as you want, however big your patches are. That's the other important thing to note about molybdenum is that by default, the molybdenum patches are very small. They are very small, and even if you kick up the percentage on the size and density of these patches, they're still going to be relatively small unless you're using resource spawner overhaul and have really kicked up the size several magnitudes. Um, so do bear in mind, if you are on standard settings, it's going to be a bit hard to get 15 molly ore, and you'll be doing a lot of hunting to get your molly patches unless you... Uh, have adjusted your resource settings. Uh, always, always adjust your resource settings. Uh, so, this chain is linear. It takes productivity modules throughout every step except for the filter step because the filter does not allow productivity mo modules in it by default. Uh, this is by design that this process takes productivity modules. Of course, just like with the Neobium processing chain, as I have mentioned before in the current state of the game, Hot air plates do not accept productivity at all, but the not hot air casting absolutely accepts productivity. Hot air adds 25% to the output rounded up, uh, so if you have greater than, if you have the ability to add more than or equal to 25% productivity through modules to this process, it's better for you to not do the hot air processing anymore. Uh, and depending on whether or not you're using a mod like Bob's Modules uh, to give yourself better, better modules, or if you're using a mod that adds module slots to machines, it can be significantly easier or significantly harder depending on what you're doing to get into that 25% range. Uh, but from here, and of course this can change at any time, I really am all for the hot air recipes for molly and for neobium to have productivity on them. I don't know why they don't have exceptions uh, 
to the general rule where hot air casting does not accept productivity just in general, but like a lot of the alloys, uh, in my opinion, should absolutely take productivity, but especially the molly, which normally does, as well as the niobium, which normally does, just suddenly can't when you do hot air. But enough is, has been said about that. Thus far, the actual chain itself, you will jaw crush your molly ore into a molybdenite powder with stone that you'll have to deal with. You ball mill that powder into dust and you get gravel you have to deal with. You then agitate with water that dust into pulp. You hydrocyclone, so you need niobium first to make the hydrocyclones. You hydrocyclone the pulp with nitrogen to get concentrate. You thicken the concentrate with water into a pulp. You filter with filtration media, thus this has to come after getting some amounts of zinc as well. Uh, the pulp into your disulfide. Your disulfide gets oxygen added in a high pressure furnace to create trioxide plus a little bit of extra sulfur. Because remember, we go disulfide, there's extra sulfur there. We are converting to a trioxide from a disulfide. That disulfide has to go somewhere, and it's going to go somewhere in the form of this sulfur. Uh, then we electrolyze our trioxide if we need the plates. We electrolyze the triosulfide with hydrogen and our hot air into the plates. Now, the complicating factor here is that we also have access to another way of getting our plates, and that is through, of course, particle acceleration. Um, particle acceleration is going to give you a bunch of plates because it is significantly easier to get chromium than it is to actually get molybdenum plates through this processing chain. Uh, chromium just simply has way higher output compared to this, uh, which is why I suggest that for your plates, in the grand scheme of things, you're not going to be doing this hot air casting. Uh, you're not going to be doing regular casting. You're going to need your trisulfide for super alloy. For super alloy. And you're going to need disulfide for your intelligent units at some point. And the only way to get the disulfide and the trioxide is to do this processing chain. But there is an alternative to get the plates. So that's why the way I tend to do things is I tend to focus my plate production on this particle acceleration recipe when I can do this recipe, uh, because note that this is using proton donors, which means boron, which means all of the wonderful gases and fluids to get into boron, the uh, refined syngas, hydrogen chloride, acetylene, yeah, all those wonderful things to get into boron if you want to do this early. Or particle accelerate your boron from the proton receivers, which is uh, sulfur for the proton receivers, if I'm remembering correctly. I hope I am. Uh, which is, yeah, pretty pretty easy. Especially since that's just coke to get your particle accelerated boron. And use that for your donors and then add chromium, spend your donors with chromium to get the plates. That it, This is also relatively fast and relatively high-ish output, but a ton of power. Uh, you are spending a lot of power by doing this uh, in this way. Uh, in my opinion, it's worth the power expenditure to get the plates through this and use the ore that you mine for stormets, the disulfide for the uh, intelligent units, the trioxide for the super alloy. Use, use the ore and such and, and not the plates out of this processing chain. You, like, do the other thing. Use the other things of this processing chain and don't worry about the plates so much uh, once you are able to do the particle acceleration of the plates. That's my opinion as I have presented to you. Uh, I have presented the chain. I have given my thoughts. I think that's actually going to be the end of it for the day today. That is all of the intricacies that I wanted to make note of in regards to this chain. I've noted that uh, 
You can do productivity on this chain. Uh, you can't do productivity on the particle acceleration. I'll throw that out there too. Uh, but considering how rare of a resource it molybdenum is supposed to be uh, on a standard map, yeah, it's you're gonna want to conserve your ore and not actually use the ore to make the plates. You're gonna want to do this particle acceleration. Uh, I would say, uh, in the end, and use the actual processing of the ore for your trioxide. Uh, that's going to be one of the bigger expenditures is the trioxide on the super alloys once you get into that phase of the game. Uh, but, anyway, with that, I would like to thank you all for watching. This has been Otaku Shibboat. If you have been enjoying these tutorials thus far, please be sure to do all of the engagement and social stuff below the video. This series is, of course, supported by my patrons at patreon.com slash otaku showboat. And don't forget, you can also support Pyandon's mods development at patreon.com slash I will, of course, see you all on the next one.